um, they had more opportunities. But anyways, the next day I rode into Sofia, and uh, yeah, that's where I got to stay at my first couch surfing. Some girl named Margarita and like her boyfriend. Well, she called him her boyfriend. He called her the roommate. I don't know. But um, he picked me up. I had to wait like a couple of hours, but yeah, I mean, they insisted on picking me up. So I hung out with them. Oh, but that day I did the whole tour. No, no, no. Yeah, then the day. Then I left with them in the morning and I did the whole tour of Sofia. Sofia is a pretty cool town. They have a really cool forest in the town. Like where you ride through and there's trails and there's, and I easily could have camped in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, trails and wow, like cool little forest in there with this little obstacle course for all these kids, which is really cool. And then I took the night train cause I wanted to get ahead and, um, schedule. I've kind of feel like a little getting a little behind and I wanted to the experience of having my own compartment in a train. So I took the night train in my own compartment, which was really cool into, um, Bucharest, Romania and uh stayed at a hostel in Bucharest, Romania. And um Bucharest the hostel was pretty cool. There was this uh Moldovan girl in there who was really talkative, who was talking all night and I was she was really cool. Um who lived in like India for two years and was now living in Switzerland and but she had a whole lot of crap to say about Moldova, like didn't ever want to go back there. She's like, Yeah, the women are beautiful there, but the men are ugly. <laughs> but um yeah, um, but yeah, but before that I had dinner, actually had dinner with, um, this Romanian girl who I met on couch surfing because I'd been doing the couch surfing thing, like writing a bunch of people and it happened a few times before they were like, well, you can't stay at my place, but I mean, if you want to hang out, go out for a drink or something, we can do that. But I'd never taken them up on it because, you know, I can just hang out with people at the hostel because... When I go to these towns, I like to, instead of camp, at least then, because that, those were cheap places. Hostels were only 10, 12 euro, which is like 12, 13 bucks, you know, um, 13, 15 bucks. I could have hung out with the people at the hostel, but I decided to be like, all right, well, I guess I'll hang out with you, you know, do it, try that once. But like she, she didn't show up. And then a half hour late, she calls me and She's like, oh, it was raining, so I couldn't go. But it turned out she lived right across the street. But anyways, I hung out with her and her friends, and her friends were pretty interested in me and could speak English. And but then one of her friends came and was like yelling and the whole time about her boss. And I don't know, Romania. The Romanians seem really like I don't know, really like touchy, like easily like, upset. And like they have problems. Like it reminded me of Chileans. Like I was in the hostel and some like American kid lost his wallet and was really worried. And and then some guy and the you know the girl was really worried. Who was working there? I was really worried looking for it. And some guy found it, a Romanian guy. And she's like, "Oh, cool, give it to me. And I'll give it to the guy." He's like, "No, I give it directly to him." You know, just I don't know. They just and then a bunch of people got pissed off at me for something I said about gypsies that I, that I saw gypsies in Romania and like. They're just really like, they got a Napoleon complex or something. But anyways, Bucharest itself is very pretty town. I was impressed. They have, whoever designed it was smart. They have lots of parks, um, cool fountains, cool, you know, buildings, palaces. Um, oh, and I, w I was trying to ride out to some reservoir to check it out. And I bumped into this beach resort place in Bucharest. They have like all these people with like a fake beach, sandy beach, sand, huge in bikinis and like d dancing around, follow the leader, 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 like a snake holding each other's, the hips of the guy in front of you. And like, like they're in a, and the pools everywhere jumping in. I mean, they knew how to party and half the chicks were topless. I was like, Whoa, it was only three bucks to get in. I was like, my God. And I asked the guys who worked there if I could film. And they're like, oh yeah, you can film. So I'm filming all these topless chicks like this, man. I was going to upload it to YouTube, but uh, I lost my video camera after that. But anyways, yeah. Then the next day I rode my bike out and um, um, I rode 140 miles that day. That was my longest day, even though I didn't get started until 1130. Um, it was flat. 
but it rained really hard for two sections and it, it must have gotten dirt in my eye because I camped out the most the most bug infested mosquito infested area I've ever I had to like set up so fast I was eating you know alive but then the next morning yeah I was riding fine but then all of a sudden my eye hurt so bad that it fused shut and then it hurt so bad that it fused both my eyes shut luckily I you know I managed to get myself just by opening for a second I could go a little bit to this hotel that I got and the lady had to who worked there had to get me the maid had to lead me by hand to the pharmacy to find like drops to put in my eye I think I was there two nights and or maybe I was there one night I was there all that day and then I stayed until checkout and then I rode over and I was gonna ride that day but it was way too bright the drops so I couldn't see and then the air was hurting my eye so I took the train and I think I left my video camera when I took my bike shorts off and my real clothes on I left the video camera on the on the um, the countertop of the bathroom and walked away and I only had the video camera for like a couple weeks it was stupid but anyway, somebody will pick it up and enjoy it because those people are poor. So, yeah, because Romania is poor. I mean, I was in some town and there was no running water in the entire town. The only running water place to get water was some well that some guy had to like lead me to and fill my water bottle up. And that water was nasty. It was disgusting. And he was acting like it was like the greatest water ever. He was really friendly. But yeah, so I took the train into uh, the border with uh, Moldova, took the train into Moldova. Hung out in Moldova a day with with this Belgian guy, and one night went out with this Belgian guy and some American chick. Um, yeah, Moldova's boring. What's it called? The capital of Moldova? I don't even remember. Chisinau, Moldova. Um, I, I heard it's like the officially like the most depressing, the depressed people in the world. They seemed kind of depressed, kind of like Russians. You know, they're really gruff. The people working, you know, she's like. No, it's English. France? No, not French. Spanish? So I'd speak Spanish to her because they speak Romanian. The Moldovans are Romanians, ethnically. They're just a part of Romania that got snatched by the Russians. So now it's like, are we Russian or are we Romanian type of a thing. So then I took the train into Kiev, Ukraine, and I hung out with uh, my host, uh, this girl who I wrote, um, and her husband, uh, Americans in Kiev, and talk to them he's like this athletic like ultra light hiker and she's athletic too she said she could do 50 push-ups when she was younger <laughs> but uh yeah talked and she was interested in the aliens so that was cool gave her a whole bunch of information and uh yeah ukraine was pretty um built up on a hill you know as it goes down to the river and ukrainians are funny man ukrainian women because when they pose they do this all these people they put they just love to pose for pictures you know, it's funny. And Ukrainian chicks are so hot, dude. They've got like the hair that comes down and it's flat like this. But they're just really hot. And they're like really flirtatious with you, man. Like more than the Slovakians. They're like... Like that. Like this ticket at the, at the train station. was even, They got like, the ticket from... Oh, man, they're hot. Those are those Ukrainian girls. Anyways, um... I, um... Yeah, then I took a night train and this Russian guy like insisted that I drink his vodka and gave me like six hits and shots and I puked my brains out and then like somehow broke my glasses in two so I couldn't see and when I got into uh, Warsaw. But I, yeah, I got into Warsaw. Oh no, that was from, no, no, that was into Kiev. And then from Kiev to Warsaw, I shared a compartment with some girl, some like grumpy lady who like didn't want my, anyway, no, she wasn't that grumpy, but. She was she was a little bit worried that I was gonna like take up her space or something, but anyways, um, yeah, I shared a compartment with that lady and just slept in the thing and yeah, I got into Warsaw and then I did a day in Warsaw. Warsaw was really pretty, but I, I heard it was completely rebuilt, like it was leveled after World War Two, and then completely really rebuilt, and so that's why the historic center is so fresh looking. But it, I mean, they totally rebuilt it the way it was, so it looked really cool. A lot of tourists. Um, yeah, I went to a titty bar one night there because I saw the thing on the hostel. But it was I was like the only guy there. It was really weird until this like this like bachelor party guys came and like invited me into their party. But um, yeah, I was up until like five thirty, 
And I had to get the train at 7.30, so I only slept for like an hour in my hostel. Oh, and in my hostel, like all morning long, there was this, the day before until like noon, there was this like French chick sleeping on her back, totally topless, in a hostel filled with like eight guys. She was there with her boyfriend, this is like dreadlock chick. But um, yeah, so anyways, got on the train, then I took the train into, um, what's it called, uh, Lithuania. But turns out, once you cross into Lithuania, all of a sudden you have to pay for the bike. Well, because I got on a new train, I changed trains, and I didn't have any money except for euros, but, or, no, no, I had Europe, I had Polish money. But these Polish chicks, they were really nice, and they, they exchanged money with me so I could pay for my bike, because the guy was, like, intent that I'd pay. And then, so I got into, got into, um, um, what was it, Vilnius, Lithuania, which is really sleepy town. Like, there was nobody there. It's like, where are the people? But it was pretty. It had a river going through with kayakers on it, and then another little river that went into a creek that kayakers were riding into that, and um, some a cool like um, little castle that I went up to the top of the original castle and look over it. It's a little town. And then I took the bus into Riga, Latvia. Riga, the bus was insane. Internet on the bus, plug-in on the bus. They sold me business class. I don't know why. Maybe because I was American. You know, it was more expensive. But I'm glad it was worth it because, I mean, I had my own table. It was insane. All you can drink, 10 different kinds of coffee. I mean, and we were getting north. So I was getting excited about getting north because it's getting, like, later. It's getting dark later every day. I was like, oh, yeah. And then get into Rika. Rika was really pretty because then the hostel I stayed was really cool. It was, like, internet, free, free internet, but this, like, hangout area like let it was like an Australian hostel you know in Europe Australians are really big into exporting their hostels there's so many Australian hostels so then all the people in the hostel are Australians and when you see Aust Australians are like the Israelis they're worse than the Israelis when you get a bunch of Australians together overseas they're like best friends all of a sudden it's like all these Australians hanging out with each other and um and they like they have this mentality. I can't just I can't define it. Even come close to defining it. But they have this different mentality that's all to themselves. And an Australian can get along with an Australian. I don't know what the deal is about them. But um, anyways, I uh, yeah. The next day I'm riding my bike all over town. It has a beautiful uh, historical downtown area. And it's just still going because I've been talking for freaking ever. Good. So why is that thing, well, I just hope it's still going because it says nothing. Um, all right. Um, here, 